Good morning. And a very warm welcome to worship this morning, whether you're here in person or online or on the phone line. Wasn't it nice to arrive at the church this morning and see it looking a little bit more like it used to look? The chairs are back in rows and things. We're still spacing everybody out. Um, and we're keeping you two seats apart because one seat's just over half a meter. So it may still feel like there's quite a distance between you, but it does feel nice to have it feeling a little bit more like normal. One more step on the road. So thank you for those of you who've come for wearing your masks and booking in. And um, we're going to restart the, if you want to book in every week, just let Edita know. So she will automatically book you in because we can accommodate quite a few more people now. So if you know you'll be coming pretty much every week, just let Edita know and she'll automatically book you in and you won't need to think about it. Um, it is helpful if you book. If you don't book, there will be space for you, but it is helpful if you book because otherwise um, Alison or whoever's at the door is frantically trying to write down all these names and phone numbers because we do need to still keep the test and protect uh, records. So it's helpful if you book, but if you forget... There, there will almost certainly be space for you, but uh, we appreciate it. makes our lives easier if you book. Uh, the, the bookings are now open right through to Saturday night online and till Edita leaves on a Friday at half past 12. So you've got a little bit more time to book. Um, and hopefully that works for everybody. We've got a number of intimations this morning. Don't forget there's a Kirk session on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. That will be on Zoom. Um, and there's a cafe church on Friday, and this one is about school memories. So we've got some photos of people in their school days to, to, to be identified, pictures of classes, see if you can recognize anybody. So that's Friday afternoon at two o'clock. We are hoping it will be outside, but if you want to come, let Adita know, and she can confirm at the last minute whether we're doing it outside, inside Zoom, or how we're going to do it, because that will be a bit weather dependent. And if you're still to get a photo into, and you would like to get a school photo into Edita, there's still a bit of time. Give her another next day or two, she'll be putting them all together. And next Sunday, the 29th of August, there will be a church picnic for all the churches in the grouping. So um, if anybody would like to come along, Moni Musk, uh, playing fields, I believe they're right next to the village hall. That probably means more to you, any of you than it does to me. Um, I'm going to go along, and it's for children of all ages, no upper or lower age limit. Uh, come along to the picnic, um, and if you want to confirm you're coming, just let Jay know, but that's just in case we decide to cancel because of bad weather or anything like that. So you can probably kind of work out if that's going to happen. But feel free to come along to the, to the picnic um, at Moni Musk next Sunday, one o'clock till about half past four, but any time between those times. We're also starting to prepare our next church magazine, or almost finishing preparing our, our next church magazine, so if you've got anything to get in it, get it to Edita in the next day or so. Um, but we need a few more people to help deliver them. So if anybody is able to deliver a few church magazines, either speak to me or speak to Susan. And uh, we, can, we can make sure you're included in that rota. The food bank, we're still, we're, we're putting this up all the time at the moment, and it might seem a little bit overkill, but actually the food bank ran out of several things this week. They were on Facebook saying we've completely run out of cereal, soup, and something else. I can't remember what the third thing was. But they had totally run out of things this week. The, the demand is a lot higher than usual. So we are reminding you every week about the food bank and uh, we'll be gathering it again on the first Sunday of the month. Uh, but if you're able to donate to that, it's really helpful. And of course, we'll be having coffee after church uh, on Zoom again today. Hopefully at some point we can start coffee after church in the church. But at the moment, the logistics of that are... Um, one step too far, so we're, we're sticking with Zoom for right now. If you can join us on Zoom after church, we say 11.45. I try to be back for about 11.30, but sometimes it's nearer 11.45. Um, but we're always happy. We just have a chat. It really is just a chance to chat to people. 
you'd be very welcome to join us if you can. And is that all our intimations? That is indeed all our intimations today. <laughs> I've not written them all down, so I'm relying on the slides. <laughs> Let's take a moment to still ourselves, take a few deep breaths, and prepare to worship God. We come today as admirers called to listen, as disciples called to follow, as God-fearers called to serve, as believers called to witness, as seekers called to vocation. Draw near to God as God makes himself known to us through worship, hymns, and prayers. Let's sing together hymn 300, no, 465, 465, Be Thou My Vision. Come to us in stillness, and out of silence speak your word. Still our racing hearts and minds, hold our restless and distracted thoughts. Help us now to centre on you. Lord, we bring to you the times we find it hard to be a Christian. 
when we're busy and want to be doing other things, when we can't find time to pray, when the going gets tough, when so many bad things happen in the world and it feels sometimes like you don't care. Lord, thank you for staying with us through the tough times and help us to remember that nothing falls outside the compass of your love. Christ has no body now on earth but ours, no hands, no feet on earth but ours. When our hands have done our work, not Christ's work, forgive us. When our feet have followed our ways, not Christ's ways, forgive us. When our eyes have not looked with Christ's compassion, forgive us. Through your grace, may we be your body on earth. Lord, may our hands do your work in the world. May our feet walk your way through the world. May we see the world with your eyes. This we pray in Jesus' name, and in his name I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today will be read for us by Andy McRae. This morning's reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known my, with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word.
A common technique which is often taught for remembering things is to envisage a journey that you know well, perhaps the route to work or the route to your children's homes or a walk to the shops, and to assign something on a list to each part of the journey. And it works for shopping lists, perhaps in imagining the milk as you walk, imagine you're walking past the school, you think of the milk, and as you walk past the bus stop, you think of the bread, and as you walk past Mrs. McGregor's house, you think of the potatoes and Mrs. Brown's house, etc. So you're thinking of all these things as you picture this journey. It, wor it works, I believe, when you're studying for exams, and it's a technique that many of my fellow students when I was studying used and found very helpful. I found it less helpful because I couldn't remember what I saw on the journey. <laughs> I couldn't picture my journey to well enough to remember to assign the stuff to it. But actually, it's really helpful if you're trying to remember things to put it with something that's really familiar. And when Paul talks of putting on the armor of God, it's a very visual image, and putting on clothes or armor would be a process that most people he was talking, he was talking to would probably have been quite familiar with. It's probably a variation on a theme of remembering things based on something that you're really familiar with. Although they're not necessarily items we would think of putting on every morning. I think I forgot my breastplate this morning. But they presumably would have been familiar in those times. They're, of course, garments a warrior would have put on. That's the context in which Paul's describing them as armor, preparation for attack. But the other thing he keeps talking about in this passage is prayer. Give yourselves wholly to prayer and entreaty. Pray on every occasion. And while I can't help thinking that the armor that Paul describes has much merit, and all the things that it reflects are important, they would be difficult, if not impossible, to achieve without prayer. Prayer is what prepares us for each day and its challenges. If those items are our armor, our breastplate and our uh, belt and coat and shoes and all the things we need to put on, then I'd like to suggest that prayer is our vest or under things. It's what underpins everything. Something you put on under your armor. It's the foundation on which everything else is built. Because every single day we choose how we will act. And if that behavior glorifies God, or not. Are we going to do what we know is right, or what is easy? Are we going to choose a loving action, or one which causes conflict? In the well-known Ephesians passage we just heard, Paul uses the picture of the soldier's armor to remind the Ephesians they are caught up in conflict between good and evil, and to urge them to rely on God's strength and power in the battle between good and evil. And the Bible takes the power of evil very seriously, but it doesn't present it as a straightforward God versus the devil. Good versus evil is not necessarily one big cosmic battle which will take place at some unprecedented date in the future. It's a daily battle that takes place in every one of our lives. A daily battle where we choose with every action we take, with every word we speak, whom we worship and what we believe in. They say the devil is in the details. A common saying, but one that holds a lot of truth. Where the devil gets in is much more in the small acts of indifference and carelessness, the little compromises with what we know to be right or wrong. In the everyday actions where we choose to either stand up for God and good or to let the devil get a foothold and let evil in. Our call is to stand firm, to hold the line, to refuse to cede another inch to hate and fear, to violence and greed, 
to racism, nationalism, or sexism. I confess that I am usually one of those people who is firmly against using war metaphors for faith. Military clothing and tactics, battle imagery, it doesn't seem to fit for me with the Prince of Peace, the one who defeats death. Jesus tells us to turn the other cheek and to pray for our enemies. And the letters of Paul tell us to clothe ourselves in compassion and kindness to bear one another's burdens, to weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice, work together the way a body works together, turn swords into plowshares, and rely on the power of love. And yet, in this stirring speech to end the letter to the Ephesians, he calls us to stand firm and to don the armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword, which is the words which come from God. But it is significant that all of these are there as defense. None of them are to give us an ounce of power over another person on earth. Because the battle is not against other human beings. There is nothing here about fighting with each other. It's all about standing fast in the face of powers larger than any one of us. The armor is designed to help folk to stand firm. It's not an armor for aggressive action. It doesn't require us to hurt any other person. It is God's armor, not ours. God's gifts, not our abilities. So taking up the armor is not about our own heroic abilities, but about the gifts that God has already given us in Christ. And it's so significant that this instruction ends with an exhortation to give yourself wholly to prayer and entreaty to pray on every occasion. Some early Christians used to have prayer competitions, and normally they were around the theme of who could pray without ceasing. One famous prayer even used to pay somebody to pray on his behalf while he was sleeping. Does kind of seem to defeat the object, but prayer does underpin everything. And Teresa of Avila, a great teacher of prayer 500 years ago, says that the life of prayer is like this. God has a garden. We are his tenant farmers. Our job is to get water to the flowers. The water is our prayer and the flowers are our lives in God's service. And Teresa says there's four ways of getting water to the flowers and she parallels this to prayer. So you can go to the well with a bucket and draw a bucket load and it's a lot of work for very little outcome. And she says, this is a little bit like when you first start praying and you find it very difficult to focus on prayer and all your prayer is a little bit about me and my faults and my wants and what I think should happen. And some people never move beyond that stage of prayer. And secondly, the second type of prayer is sort of like going to the, the you, drawing water using a pump. Most of us have probably not had to do that, certainly not very recently, drawing, using a pump to draw water. That's still quite a bit of work, but it's not as hard work as using a bucket. And she calls this prayer of quiet or recollection, where the soul touches on things divine, and the focus becomes a little bit more, thy will be done, rather than my will be done. The soul offers itself up, and this prayer leads to satisfaction and peace. The third way of watering the flowers is to divert a stream so that it goes in between them. You still need to do a bit of weeding and clearing the channels, but that's an awful lot less work, and that's more about simply focusing on being in the presence of God, feeling the deep satisfaction and happiness through prayer of contemplation, being rather than doing. 
And the final way in which the flowers can be watered is when it rains. This is when God is pleased to grant us some favor and his coming is accompanied by the greatest sweetness and peace and quietness within. Teresa is clear, the water is always for the flowers, prayer is always the handmaid of discipleship, and prayer should lead to transformed lives. She says the most potent and acceptable prayer is the prayer that leaves the best effects. Prayer is the foundation on which everything else is built, and it can be difficult or easy, long or short. Traditional Christian teaching speaks of three modes of prayer, prayer with the lips, speaking a prayer, prayer with the mind, like an Ignatian type prayer, or prayer of the heart, a completely silent space. The most difficult to create and sustain, but the most rewarding in how we feel. But however we pray, what we need to do is just keep on keeping on, even through the times of great darkness and dryness. And often it will be prayer in the times of shadows where we experience most deeply the mystery of the gospel. Prayer teaches us how to live, but it's not a competitive sport. We don't need to pay somebody to pray on our behalf while we are asleep. For prayer is us spending time with God. But we do need to remember that truth and integrity and peace and faith and spirit are all gifts of the God. All gifts of God which are shown in the armor of God. Which are already here with us. Our armor is available to us, and the challenge that Ephesians 6 gives us is to take it up, to rouse ourselves from dormant faith and discover for ourselves the gifts which God has already given us. In God's name, amen.
Let's join our hearts together in prayer again. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are both comforting and discomforting. You challenge us to be faithful in following your Son, even when part of us wants to walk away. Thank you for holding on to us when we are unable to hold on to you, for giving us one another for support and encouragement, for understanding our frailty and loving us anyway. Generous God, we thank you for the world which you have made, for your mighty love, for creating and inspiring life. May we praise you through our living and our working, through our speaking and making and thinking, in encounters with neighbors and with strangers, in creations of art and of science. We praise you through struggles for a world where your kingdom may come on earth as it does in heaven. As we put on the armor you give us, we come with our prayers for others. We put on the belt of truth as we long for truth and justice throughout the world. We think especially of Afghanistan and other places where people do not see justice or fairness. In the brokenness of discord, in the silence of injustice, we hear your people giving voice to their fear, hear their prayer. We put on the breastplate of righteousness and give thanks for all people of faith. In the joy of worship and the struggles of living together in faith communities, unite us in love. We put on the shoes to proclaim a gospel of peace as we long for peace in our world. You came as the Prince of Peace, but so often we crucify your word and stifle your purposes. Help us to bring peace to your world. We hold the shield of faith as we bring to you those whose faith is tested and whose life is struggle those who've asked for or who need our prayers, protect and heal those we bring to you today. We wear the helmet of salvation as we recognize our need for renewal and forgiveness. And we pray for your world that so often drowns out the words of the Spirit. Restore your people. We wield the sword of the Spirit, praying that your Spirit will fill us. May we be strong in your name, stand firm, and put on your armor to declare boldly that you are our loving God. And may all we do be underpinned by the vest of prayer. May we acknowledge you, listen to you, commune with you in all we do. Send us out equipped with your gifts to be bearers of your love. In prayer, draw us deeper and deeper to your heart. In stillness and silence, may we know our need of you. And in action, may we serve others as you have here served us. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second view today is 502, Take My Life, Lord, Let It Be.
come to our benediction, we'll remain seated as usual and file out sort of from the back, but we're not going to be quite as you, then you, then you, then you as we have been. Just file out from the back rows as you can, trying to keep some distance. So now, go from this place, not to be served, but to serve. In the name of Christ who has gone before us, in the love of God, our Heavenly Father, in the power of the Spirit, source of humility, go with assurance, go with God's blessing, go in peace. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those whom you love, near and far away, now and always. Mm -hmm.